story of the man who tried for more than eight years to expose Bernie Madoff. It's now, well, it's now coming to the big screen. CBS News business and economics correspondent Rebecca Jarvis back again this morning with more on this, which is a fascinating story. Yeah, it really is. And more details have emerged over the last three years. When Bernard Madoff was arrested three years ago, many people couldn't believe his crimes had gone undetected for so long. And that astonishment, it turned to anger when it was revealed that one man uncovered the Ponzi scheme, even went to the Securities and Exchange Commission five times to try and expose it. That man is Harry Markopoulos. A walk past Manhattan's famed lipstick building provokes a strong reaction from Harry Markopoulos. So what do you call this building? I call it Satan's Lair. It's the building where his nemesis, Bernard Madoff, the perpetrator of a $65 billion Ponzi scheme that ruined thousands of lives, used to work. He was stealing my clients, and I wasn't going to tolerate that. If you steal from a Greek, we come after you. One guy led you to this pile of dung that is Bernie Madoff and stuck your nose in it, and you couldn't figure it out. His relentless mission to expose the Ponzi schemer is chronicled in Chasing Madoff, a movie hitting theaters this Friday. I was like the boy that cried wolf, but there was a wolf. Mark Apolis, who had been managing a hedge fund worth millions, spent nearly a decade trying to convince the Securities and Exchange Commission that Madoff's investment firm was a fraud. My first submission was in May of 2000, and it basically explained how Bernie Madoff had to be operating a scam. His performance line went up at a 45 degree angle. Baseball it would be like player. a baseball player batting a 964 batting average. It took me five minutes to figure it out. The quest to expose Madoff so consumed Markopoulos that he feared for his life. The stakes were so high that he bought a gun and routinely would check his car for bombs. I realized then that Bernie was stealing from the Russians and the Colombians. And if he was doing that, that was a very dangerous game for him to play because if they found it, they were going to kill him. Wall Street veteran Bernie Madoff has been arrested and charged. He plead guilty to ripping off investors $50 billion. In December 2008, crumbling under mounting pressure in a struggling economy, Madoff was arrested. Not because the SEC listened, but because Madoff turned himself in. What the heck went on? At a February 2009 hearing, lawmakers gave the SEC a tongue lashing. Your value to, to the American people is worthless. You. Over its failure to catch Madoff. It was a very specific complaint. Not once, not twice, not three, but four, five times. How many more times would a whistleblower have to bring complaints to the SEC for them to have investigated the Madoff case? The SEC blew it. Time and time again, they had it staring them in the face, and they didn't see the obvious. Whether this was because they didn't want to see it, whether it was pure ineptitude, whether it was corruption at some level, who knows? Whatever it was, the SEC utterly failed. Last week, Congress announced an investigation into SEC practices, in part because of the Madoff case. But that's no consolation to Markopoulos. We didn't stop Bernie Madoff. The financial collapse of 2008 stopped him. So nothing we did brought about his demise, and I wish we had. I wish we, we tried like hell. Well, the SEC may not have been listening to Harry back then, but they certainly are listening to Harry now. This summer, they unveiled a new whistleblower program that we almost could call the Harry Markopoulos program. And I think going forward, they will be much more attuned to the importance of people like Harry Markopoulos and how much they strengthen the regulatory effort. But Markopoulos thinks being a whistleblower still involves great risks. Usually, it's going to destroy their career. They're going to be retaliated against. They're going to be put on an industry blacklist. And they're going to have to start at the bottom of a career ladder in some other industry. Do you think this is your calling? It is. I thought it was Wall Street, and I found out it was actually chasing bad guys on Wall Street. So it was totally different than what I expected, but now I have found my calling. And as for Bernard Madoff, he is serving his 150-year sentence in North Carolina prison. But Markopoulos says many more arrests should follow. Markopoulos also told me that he'd one day like to focus on Congress, where he says he can find a lot more fraud guys. What would his advice be for investors that trust these people? I mean, with Bernie Madoff, people were fighting for five minutes down at the West Palm Country Club just to, to get a little bit of his wisdom. I mean, what would the advice be to make sure you're not getting ripped off? Ultimately, Markopoulos says you really have to be diligent. And we hear this 
this all the time, but how can you be diligent? One thing he says is to get it in writing and get your advisor, any advisor, to put for you in writing that there are no conflicts of interest. What would a conflict of interest be? Well, you could potentially be in an investment that your advisor is making money off of losses on. So let's say your advisor makes money when an investment loses and you make money when an investment wins. Well, that is not an investment you want to be in and you want your advisor to put in writing exactly that, that they are not involved in the investments and that you are safe and your money is protected. It's one form, obviously, it's not the ultimate thing because Bernard Madoff was able to do this on such a grand scale, but it's one thing that'll help protect you a little more. All right. Yeah, a lot Megan, of people. It's just fascinating, too. I mean, even this many years on, the more you learn about it, just a while. What he got away ride. with. I know. Especially with all the red flags, it's criminal. It really is. Criminal. All right, Rebecca, Thanks, thank guys. you.